Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. This video is going to take a look at the new Battle Elephant. It's a stable unit exclusive to the four new Rise of the Rajah civilizations, and I've been wondering about how it performs against a variety of different units, as well as what hidden attributes it has. We'll take a look at that, as well as the variations between the new civilizations. Let's check it out. At a quick glance of their stats, it's easy to see that battle elephants are strong, but not on the same level as the Persian war elephants, which have higher attack and several hundred more HP. With most stats, battle elephants actually tend to split the difference between knights and war elephants, which is also reflected in their cost. The elite upgrade looks expensive at 800 food and 500 gold, but seems pretty reasonable when you compare it to other upgrades at the stable. It certainly looks like a better deal on paper than both the Paladin and especially the Hazar upgrade. It also compares favorably to the Persian's Elite War Elephant upgrade. Speaking of upgrades, at the Blacksmith they're affected by the same ones as any other cavalry, and they are affected by Bloodlines to give an extra 20 HP, though keep in mind it's a relatively small effect considering where their HP already started. Like other stable units, their movement rate is also affected by husbandry. Being elephant units, they can really use every speed boost they can get, and many of their counters work by exploiting their slow movement rate. They're also created in 28 seconds, which for comparison is about the same as knights and scouts, though of course you'll need a much better food economy to sustain that production. To go back and try to put them in perspective compared to War Elephants, there are some differences between the new civilizations and their bonuses, which I'll look at in a minute, but if we just take the Burmese Battle Elephants as an example, one on one the War Elephants win easily and end up with more than half their HP left. When we try to roughly balance the resources to get a sense of cost effectiveness, we get about 50% more battle elephants than war elephants, and in that situation the war elephants still win without any problems. I think it's fair to say that war elephants aren't just better in terms of population efficiency, but also in terms of resource efficiency when we throw them head to head like this, which just shows the insane value that elite war elephants can give in melee fights. Now that's not to say that battle elephants are a terrible investment though, and if we put comparable total resources into Persian paladins, the battle elephants easily come out on top. There might be some hidden factors helping them out in this particular test though, so let's take a look at those. The first big one is that they do trample damage. That's when units deal indirect damage to units immediately around them whenever they attack. So being bunched up like this, each elephant is actually damaging several paladins at once. To get a sense of exactly how that works, we have here a battle elephant with 23 attack. We can see it alternating between 11 and 12 damage to militia around it. Likewise, if we upgrade the armor of those units, the battle elephant now does 19 attack to its main target, and now it's 9 or 10 damage to the non-targeted champions. From that, the best I can tell is it looks like it's doing half its attack to everything around it once all the armor and everything is calculated. Considering the fact that you can fit 8 units around an elephant, and the unit the elephant is attacking doesn't take trample damage, for every attack that translates to a maximum output of somewhere between 81 and 103, depending on which civilization's elephants we're talking about. To illustrate how powerful that can be, Burmese battle elephants lose to two halberdiers on a small scale, but when we make it 40 versus 20, keeping the same 2 to 1 ratio of units, trample damage flips the results and the battle elephants win easily. To me that shows the importance of trying to take fights that maximize the trample damage effect, and it's something to think about when you're setting up engagements. Also, like the Persian War Elephant, Battle Elephants have a hidden attack bonus against buildings, with the regular Battle Elephant doing an extra plus 7, and the Elite Battle Elephant doing plus 10 damage. 
Dealing damage to buildings could be considered a strength of the battle elephants, and let's take a look at what else they're good at. We've already seen that they do well in tightly packed melee fights against paladins, which also generalizes to a lot of other melee units because of their trample damage, but they're also reasonably good at taking arrow fire. For example, Burmese battle elephants take one damage from both skirmishers and fully upgraded arbalasts. Rams are often used to soak up archer fire in general, but they're easily killed by melee units, and battle elephants are a potential substitute in that role. Another thing that I think gets overlooked sometimes is that cost effectiveness isn't everything. Sometimes you have to consider how effectively units use your population space as well. As an example, halberdiers against cavalry are one of the hardest counters you can find in the game. And yet, with equal numbers, paladins win every time. Losing fights means losing map control, which can ultimately mean losing the game. That's not to say you should respond to halberdiers with paladins, but that if you have resources to spare, being thrifty and efficient doesn't always win. In the super late game, the better your units, the more of your economy you can turn into something useful on the field at any particular moment. Now on the other hand, in the early game when population limit isn't a concern, there still are cost effective counters that are good to know. So now let's take a look at their weaknesses. The pikemen and halberdier line, for instance, has a massive bonus against elephants. It's even more than against regular cavalry. They don't survive very long on account of their low HP, but they're easily the cheapest and most common counter to mass elephants. If the elephants are still relatively small in number, another of their weaknesses is against monks. Elephants move pretty slowly, so as long as you can micro the monks to convert different elephants at the same time, you can most likely end up taking the majority of their army and turning it around. Also keep in mind that of the four new civilizations, only one has access to heresy, so even in the post-imperial stage, this strategy can still work. Another great counter if you happen to be playing Saracens is the Mameluke. In large groups, they do all right, but when they really shine is with hit and run, focus firing one elephant at a time without giving them a chance to catch up. You might think cavalry archers do this just as well or better because they're a bit faster, but there's a couple reasons why Mamluks do it best. First of all, they do melee damage, and elephants have significantly less melee armor than pierce armor. The second hidden thing going on is that Mamluks have an anti-cavalry bonus of plus 12, so they end up doing 22 damage per attack, where a cavalry archer would do 4 damage. So that's pretty much it for the really direct counters, but there are a few other units with bonuses that should get a mention. Camels, for instance, get a plus 18 attack bonus against elephants, but their effectiveness ultimately comes down to how they're being used. If we put some generic heavy camels against battle elephants in a really dense fight with equal resources, the trample damage and beefy stats of the elephants more than compensates for the camel's bonus damage. On the other hand, if we spread the units out, the camels win. I'd say they have the potential to be a counter, but you have to engage the elephants in small numbers. The Italian Genoese crossbows are another interesting unit with a bonus against cavalry. They do 14 extra damage per shot, so against elite battle elephants with generic upgrades, they do 17 damage, as opposed to the regular Arbalest 3. Normally, archers aren't a great choice against battle elephants, but in this case, each crossbow is doing about the damage of 5 regular archers. This one again depends on how you're using them, and you really need to get a lot of the crossbows in order for this to work. The last counter I want to mention doesn't have an attack bonus per se, but instead works by exploiting the elephant's slow speed, and that's Siege. Onagers are pretty effective, and Scorpions also work well, with the idea being that they both deal a lot of damage against bunched up units, as long as you can support them with something like Halberdiers and Front. Just make sure the elephants don't end up breaching your siege, or you'll be in for a bad time. So now that we've seen how battle elephants perform in different situations and against different units, let's take a look at the variations between the civilizations. To start with, the Burmese have two unique tacks. The first one gives them an extra melee and two extra pierce armor, and the second adds plus six attack against buildings. That means in general, their elephants should work the best against archers and can take a lot of fire in front of your units. Next, the Khmer battle elephants move 15% faster and have a unique tech for plus three attack. 
I set up a mini tournament between all the post Imperial Battle Elephants with all upgrades, and the Chimeras ended up being the strongest. Remember, the extra attack also means extra trample damage, making them perform the best against melee units, and their faster movement partially negates their weakness to Monks and Siege. I think their sharpest contrast is with the Malay, who have 25% cheaper elephants, but lack the mid and late game upgrades like Bloodlines and the second and third level of the armor tax. Given equal numbers, they're by far the worst, though given equal resources, they're roughly on the same level as the Khmer in melee. You might argue that that makes them equally good, but remember that half the point of elephants is that you're using the population space efficiently. They don't perform that role as well as the other battle elephants in the late game, but they're perfectly serviceable in the castle age, especially with the Malay faster advances. The last of the new civilizations is the Vietnamese, which have a tech that adds 30 HP. That gives them the highest HP of the group, and they also get bloodlines on top of that. The best HP doesn't necessarily mean they survive the longest though, since the Burmese extra armor has a similar effect against melee units, and a much greater resilience against ranged units. The Vietnamese battle elephants also have a slightly weaker attack, and feel the most generic to me. They're beaten by both the Khmer and Burmese elephants, and lose to the Malay with equal resources. But those are my thoughts on the new battle elephants. Overall, I think they're interesting and tap into a fairly unique role. Their effectiveness really comes down to using them in the right situations to maximize their trample damage and offset their counters, which I think means they're hitting the right balance. Hopefully this helps you out in your next game. Even if you forget everything in the video, at least your battle elephants won't. I'd be interested to hear your guys' thoughts and experiences with them so far as well. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.